The Mustang Week. Dear Class of 2020, oh, how I wish I was at the Opera House sitting there watching you cross the stage one by one. I love seeing all that potential, the joy, and such tangible evidence of all that's good in the world. That's what each and every one of you are to me. You are a Mustang forever, but it's your time now to run free and create new adventures and experiences. Well, maybe don't run totally free just yet. Maintain a social distance and put on your mask. But honor the fact that you have reached a major milestone. You are ending one phase and starting a new chapter of your life. It's got to be both scary and exciting. And it must be so strange to end your Northside years without all the normal rituals. My heart aches for you, dear class of 2020, but it also cheers for you. I want you to know how much I believe in you. I just know and even count on the goodness you're going to bring to your part of the world. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, just be your best self. You have so much potential and there's no way to tell where your journey will take you. Life is a puzzle on, without a picture on the box to guide us. You don't know how these pieces are gonna fit together, but it's your life. All these experiences lie ahead of you, like each of these pieces. Commencement is a beginning, and I advise you to just keep showing up. Try something, just begin. Events will fall into place and connections will be made. Enjoy the process and the journey without knowing where it will take you. Sure, you can make some plans akin to sorting the edges, sorting by colors to guide you, but your future will take you places you cannot yet imagine. Along the way, remember to have fun and be kind to yourself. There's no right way or route you should take to approach your next steps. Like a puzzle, just trust yourself. Seek guidance, change course if something doesn't fit right. And in the end, I think you'll see your life's journey will produce a fabulous picture. It's been my utmost pleasure to be your teacher. I wish you all the best. I'm gonna miss you, keep in touch, and many, many heartfelt congratulations. Hi everyone. I just wanna say, I am so sorry. This is how your senior year is ending. Um, but as in everything, try and find silver linings in everything. Um, Jimmy Dean said, I can't change the destination of the wind, but I can adjust my sails to always reach my destination. There will always be hiccups as you go along the way in life, but just remember you can get through them. Uh, it might be a different path than you planned, but you can still reach your goals. I want you all to know that you're such an inspiration. Um, I have missed you so much. Um, being with you uh, during this quarantine. Um, but just be proud of who you are, cherish your talents, um, just really reach for the stars, go after your passion. Um, good luck to all of you in all your future endeavors. I can't wait to see um, your future. What I've always said is you guys have made it through Northside, you can make it through anything. Good luck. Congratulations, class of 2020. Um, your circumstances are definitely the strangest of the 15 graduating classes that I have seen, you know, through my time here at Northside so far. Um, my quarantine, I spent a fair amount of time both, you know, growing out this ridiculous beard, uh, as well as watching Disney Plus with my 10 and seven and two year old. Um, and so as I was putting this together, um, we we were watching uh, we were watching Wreck It Ralph, and I started to see. Well, hold on, you know, there's this scene where the girl is about to cross the finish line, and she sees it coming, and it's all she's ever wanted to do is, is like cross this finish line. So she gets back in the race, and she becomes a real character. And then all of a sudden, the racetrack gets attacked, and it gets blown up, and it she just doesn't finish at that point. And it kind of got me thinking. Well, that's probably what you all feel like over the course of this second semester of your senior year. You saw the finish line coming up, and then it wasn't there. Um, but eventually, in the movie, the girl does cross the finish line, uh, and you do too, uh, and, and that's today. Um, so as you get ready to leave the Northside bubble for 
the real world, which is very, very different. Um, I have three pieces of, of advice, of, of knowledge, of wisdom, of things that sound less important than that, um, that I'm going to pass along to all of you. Um, and the first of those is that fit matters way more than the name of the next school that you attend. It's, it's about optimizing the place that you land, not landing in the optimal place. It's more important for you all to be able to look back four years from now and say, man, I'm so glad I went there as opposed to being able to say that beforehand, right? Looking at it now, what you do over your next four years is going to determine whether it was the right place for you. It's not something that's pre-designed. It's something that you make into the right fit. And that's based on how you spend your time there. That's not just classes. That's not just majors, but that's things like community groups. That's things like dorm life. That's things like intramurals, right? It's, it's taking classes, even if they might not be distros, even if they might not be like for the sake of boosting your GPA, just seems like an interesting class. That's how fit gets created, right? It's finding friends, not, you know, finding, you know, friends out of 250 other freshmen because you all went to the same grade school or because you share a bus route home, but it's about finding, you know, friends out of the 2000 other freshmen because of interests and because of values, not because of, you know, arbitrary stuff like, you know, SAT scores or AP. No, nobody cares about your SAT scores. Nobody cares about your APs or your GPA. If you can remember 900 rhetorical devices, none of that matters. That What matters going forward and what should have mattered the whole time is how you treated one another and, and how you act and how you behave and the person that you are. And that's what creates fit. It's not, you know, landing at the most selective school. And, you know, some of you may have landed at a school where, you know, it wasn't your first choice. And, you know, you may not be a person who loves football games, but that might be the thing to do on your campus. Or you may not like dance shows, but that may be the thing to do on your campus. Go anyway. And you go anyway and you look around the stadium or you look around the, the recital hall and you find a dozen other people who are kind of looking at each other going, man, this is not my scene. And you pick them out and you say, yeah, I don't want to be here either. Uh, next time one of these comes up, like, let's go somewhere else together. Let's go somewhere as a group. And you find friends that way. Even if it's not your thing, you go and you try it out. And that's that's how you make friends. That's how you end up making the fit matter. That's how you end up enjoying your time. That's how you end up looking back on it four years from now and saying, I'm so glad I went here. That's how you end up, you know, 20 years down the road with friends that you're going to be there for weddings. You're going to be there for the births of their kids. You're going to be there for divorces. You're going to be there for their cancer diagnoses. That's, you know, it's going to be more than grades. It's going to be more than classes. And, and sometimes you do kind of have to backseat those. Sometimes your grades are not the most important thing. And that's kind of the second big idea that I bring you to is that the learning that is off the syllabus is a hell of a lot more important than the learning that's on it. The stuff that's in exams and tests and papers, yeah, that's fine and that's good, but the more important stuff is the stuff you can't get that way. So yeah, you might have an exam at 9 a.m. You know, the next day, but you know, have the dorm room conversation at two in the morning, go to the lounge and talk with friends. You know, until two from, you know, friends from a different state that looks very, very different from yours or find a professor's brain to pick that, you know, is outside of your major just because you think their stuff is interesting, not for the sake of eyewash, but because you genuinely want to know something about it. Go, you know, many of you are going to be in faraway locations for school. Go explore your new town. Go take a bunch of friends and see what the town looks like. And, you know, that's, that's the learning that's going to matter more than anything that gets covered in a textbook, right? You know, the, and hopefully it was the same way for you here. Hopefully you saw that the group projects and the partner work and the things that we like, that's not for the sake of putting a grade on something. That's for teaching you to collaborate with somebody you might not have chosen to work with. That's to teach you about communicating with somebody that maybe learns differently or sees things differently. And, you know, sometimes maybe you flubbed that one. Maybe it didn't work well for you the first time through, but you talked it through, you had an open mind, you tried it differently the next time and it worked better for you, right? That's that's the learning that doesn't show up on the first day of class when they hand out the syllabus. That's a learning that doesn't show up in the table of contents in the textbook. Um, and then the, the last of the three ideas is, is the most important one. It's the one I've given to every class as they've gone through. And it's really, it's four simple words. It's work hard and be kind. And uh, to be honest, you all need those less than any of the other 15 classes that have come before because you figured them out on your own. Um, you know, the last 18 months 
right? You picked each other up after losing two classmates. You picked each other up after losing a couple weeks during the height of college application season, right? Some of you didn't have admissions go the way you wanted and you picked each other up there. Like, and that's not even counting all of the individual baggage that you carry from home life or social tension or extracurriculars or, you know, local national issues that you know, got sideways and that matter to you. Um, and, and watching you all keep each other up, that picked us up in the faculty because, you know, we're sort of powerless to make it all better, but, you know, you just kind of kept plugging away and you kept working hard and you kept being kind. And now here we are. So I've seen, as I mentioned, 15 classes graduate by this point, but you know, none of them have endured what you've endured. So I wish you way more than luck. We love you all. We miss you all. And most importantly, uh, we're, we're proud of you all. Congratulations, class of 2020. I am so proud of you. You made it this far. I, this was incredibly challenging, and I can only imagine what you went through just to get here. So know that your effort and the time that you put in and just going through this experience is so monumental. Um, when you move on to the next part of your journey, I want you guys to carry on those friendships, check in with each other, be kind to each other, speak for those who do not have a voice, and just keep moving forward and just help society. Um, you guys are amazing. I know you guys are going to do so much through all this difficulty and this difficult experiences that you had to go through just to get here. Um, you guys are, you know, phenomenal, and it's been an honor to have you guys in my classroom. So stay connected, do good, and be kind. Congrats again. Hello, class of 2020. Um, first off, I just wanted to say that I am doing this video in my complete graduation regalia because one, it's awesome. And two, I figured if I look as official as possible, I may get through this without crying. I'm probably going to cry. Um, I just want to say congratulations to all of you. I haven't been at Northside very long. This is my first year, but I could tell immediately that the school was a special place. And it didn't take me long to figure out that you seniors were the ones who were responsible for so much of Northside's magic. I have this year been so completely impressed with your class's leadership, talent, and resilience. And it has been such an honor to get to know so many of you in my classes. Um, you're an amazing group of young people, and I am so proud of you and so excited to see what you will achieve as you go out to this world. And with that said, um, my recommendation for you as this high school chapter of your life closes and your journey continues on to new things, don't forget to have fun. Um, while you're focusing on those studies and paving your career paths, uh, take time to do the things that bring you joy. And always, always keep exploring and trying new things. Um, go take that random class just because it intrigues you and go on that trip that you've never, you know, to that place you've never been and and go to that event where you don't know anybody. And um, of course, always learn some new technology. Um, just say yes to new adventures because not only are these the things that generally just make life richer, but you have no idea what opportunities you'll, you'll receive or the incredible people you will meet um, as a result of those experiences. Um, and lastly, stay in touch. Whatever your next chapter may be, just know that your teachers at Northside are very proud of you and they'll do everything um, they can to support you. And we would love to hear about your adventures. So congratulations again, class of 2020. And all the best to you. Hello, class of 2020. I hope you're doing well. We miss you guys so much. And um, I know this isn't how you imagine the end of your senior year would be. Um, but I just want to say that we're all so grateful for the memories we were able to share. And we're all so proud of your resilience and strength to get through this tough time. Um, I can't wait to see as you guys continue to decide 
um, what your fall looks like next year and where you're off to and what path you're taking. So best of luck and we'll talk soon. Hi seniors, it's Mr. Hughes. Um, it's just like me popping into advisory to deliver a message to you guys on Wednesdays. Um, I'm incredibly, incredibly saddened that I wasn't able to uh, see you all in person. Um, but I wanted to say congratulations to a family of graduating Northside seniors that have certainly endured the test of time over these past four years. Um, I just wanted to wish you all much success um, as you move on to your new f futures. Um, please remain vigilant, strong, and dedicated to your destination and goals. I'm proud of you guys. Um, I know you and the rest of your peers are going to be the next powerhouses of the future. Go Mustangs and congratulations. Hi seniors, it's Miss Flanagan. Um, I wish we were celebrating you in all the usual ways because you deserve all of it. I've taught a bunch of seniors over the years and I've never known a group of seniors so centered in kindness and so resilient uh, in the face of challenge after challenge, none of which have been under your control. So I think the world of you, I've, I've thought the world of you for a while now, but these last several weeks have really cemented my respect for you. Um, so thank you for letting me be part of your life in some way over the last four years, whether we had a class or a colloquium or a club together, or if we just said hi in the hallways, or even if I just heard your name uh, in, you know, mostly good ways. Um, so the thing is, the path to where we're going is rarely easy, and it is almost never a straight line. But we get there, and we become who we are along the way. And we can't wait to see who you become and what you do, because we know it's going to be incredible. Um, so uh, my last bits of advice, hang on to your weird friends, because they're the best adults. Um, ask tough questions, and make good trouble. We love you. Do great out there. Hi, my dear seniors. Greetings from the Matthews family basement. <laughs> um, I miss you all so much, and I am honored to deliver one of your last lectures. I have been trying so many times to start this, <laughs> and I feel like I've finally figured out um, what needs to be said. So, Francis Bacon once said, in order for the light to shine so brightly, the darkness must be present. I shared that quote with you last year at Manny's memorial. And that obviously it was very applicable during that time but I feel like it's also very applicable during this quarantine time as well. So I wanted to remind you of a few things that I said, because now is the time for you to take action on them. So here we go. My dear college campus, and I'm gonna paraphrase a little bit here, Every time that you enroll a Northside student, you will get someone who says hello to people they don't know. You will get someone who makes everyone they encounter feel valued and cared for. You will get someone who will inspire their classmates. You might also get someone who walks around your campus with a bag of chips and an Arizona iced tea all the time. Maybe you can do that one day, huh? <laughs> I also
also talked about that I know you all and I know that you will not sit in the darkness that you will analyze it you will question why the darkness exists you will look at the darkness systemically and you will do something about it you will let the light of your classmates of your family of yourself of loved ones that that you've lost or cared for You will let that light shine wherever you go and in everything that you do. You will shine your lights in the smallest of crevices and on the biggest of stages. You will take everything that you have learned and everything about who you are and you're going to make your college campus a better place. Just like Northside was better because of you. I miss you all so much. I know in my heart that we will see each other again. And you shine that light so bright when you get there because we are all so proud of you. In my heart always here. I will always be your Mrs. Matthews whenever you need me. And you can do this. Hang in there. Dear class of 2020, we didn't choose to be here. Our existence is full of contingencies. In other words, we've been thrown into this world. We've been given these bodies, the talents that we possess, and these historical circumstances. Contingencies also imply that most things are not absolutely certain. With the contingencies of existence necessarily come loss, and with loss can come the kind of world shaking that, frankly, I think you've all had way too much of. Your class lost Emmanuel and Jack, and now we are here. When I reflect about how I've seen some of you grow over the past four years, or how you've impressed me if I've just met you this year, I see something that I don't often see outside of the walls of Northside. Hope. As a pessimist, I often worry that people look at hope with a capital H, and as a result of their upward-looking admiration, ignore the bad things that are happening at eye level. The kind of hope you've given me is not the capital H kind. I couldn't possibly overlook your losses. The hope you've given me in the time that I've gotten to know many of you is based on the profound sense of compassion that I've seen in you. I use the word compassion because I think it gives a better sense of how we ought to live with one another, attentive to each other, suffering with one, one another, being there for each other. I like to think of compassion as referring to one another as a co or fellow sufferer. Compassionate people are people who share pain because they don't want the other person to feel that pain alone. Empathy to me seems empty by comparison. We could feel empathy for someone and do nothing. Compassion takes work. It requires you to be with another person to suffer with them and try to understand them. Compassion never covers over the suffering one has endured. You, members of the class of 2020, are some of the most compassionate people I've ever met. Amidst these contingencies, you have found certainty in the hardships of life that make life a lot lighter. That certainty that you found is friendship. You found friends of all kinds, friends that can make up a complex community like Northside College Prep. 
All friends are compassionate fellow sufferers to varying degrees. Class of 2020, know that we are your friends, suffering with you, and we always wish you the best. We love you, and we are with you. Hi, class of 2020, advisory 004. Just wanted to give you guys a couple last words to say thank you for all the growth that you guys have shown since you were freshmen. I started off with a lot of you in Spanish 2, had you in Spanish 3, and just wanted to say we all feel for you. This class has endured more pain and um, surprises than your average class of 2020, and we know that. But I'm an optimist, and I know that the universe, God, something, has something very, very special for this class. And um, just want to let you know that we are all there emotionally with you guys. And we wish you all the luck in college and beyond. You are going to accomplish some amazing things. And we know that. Peace out. My dear students of the class of 2020, if I had the pleasure and honor of teaching you, then you know that some grandiose speech in front of lots of people isn't my jam. I would rather make you come do some math with me during your lunch or stay after school. But that's so that when I say I believe in you and I see so much potential in you and I will always be here for you, then you know that I am talking to you specifically. So you'll just have to trust that I'm talking to every one of you the whole class of 2020, even if we never had class together, because I started my experience at Northside with you four years ago. I grew up as a teacher and a person in a school whose culture you helped shape. All of you. I've seen you support one another through deep bouts of grief and celebrate so genuinely each other's accomplishments and love one another so firmly even when you're not your best selves. It may be years, probably will be years, before you fully understand the impact that you've had on others and on our community, um, but you've changed lives here all the same. And I want you to keep this in mind as you go forward, especially when you're questioning your worth, because even if you doubt it, you're valuable all the same. To all my 2020 darlings, I love you. I'm still here for you. We'll always be here for you and can't wait to see you again. Congratulations, class of 2020, for reaching this milestone and for overcoming what was assuredly the most unfathomable of senior years. This last lecture is really important to me because while I'm thrilled to be you know, part of some of the last words that you're gonna hear from your teachers at Northside, it's really also an opportunity for me to give back a little bit to all of you wonderful, special students who have given me so much over all of these years. Uh, my hope is to speak on a couple of life areas that emphasize the importance of who you become over what you become. So, regarding failure, um, know that for every problem, there is a solution. Your job is to train yourself to have the patience, the focus, the desire to go find them. You know, musicians are trained to diagnose problems with laser precision and quickness. And we can often define ourselves by our mistakes. Um, but the truth is, is that we often have very few mistakes in relation to the entirety of the whole piece of music. 
really small fraction. So reminding yourself that you are often further along in your journey than you think is a motivator to keep going. Regarding confidence, um, during this time away from school, one of the really thrilling documentaries that I saw was Michelle Obama's Becoming. And one of her most solid like mic drop moments was from her book tour. And it was when she affirmed everyone's right to have a voice. She said, um, I've been at probably every powerful table that there is in the world. I've been at G summits. I've been in castles and palaces and in boardrooms. And I'm coming down from the mountaintop to tell every young person that this, that is poor and working class and has been told regardless of their color of their skin that you don't belong. Don't listen to them. They don't even know how they got at those seats. In essence, if you want it, there is no reason you shouldn't visualize yourself sitting at and speaking from one of those seats. And lastly, just regarding you, um, this year we had the distinct pleasure at Northside to put on the musical Into the Woods, which is chock full of morality lessons and thought-provoking one-liners. Uh, one that I always hope people kind of keep etched into their memories is a quote from Little Red Riding Hood, uh, who says about a friendly wolf, nice is different than good. Well, please know that you have an obligation to yourself to decipher between nice people and good people. And equally important, you have a responsibility to be truly good to others and to yourself, even if it doesn't always feel nice. The world could really use some truth and goodness, and you already have it all within you. Thank you. Love you. Greetings, class of 2020. When we were asked to do this, I wasn't quite sure what to do. This sort of thing is not exactly my forte, and I wondered what sage wisdom I could possibly convey to you in three minutes. I first contemplated composing a poignant and profound exhortation, but settled instead on a string of trite aphorisms and random bits of advice, starting with the words of wisdom from the famous Dwight Schrute, formerly of the Dunder Mifflin paper concern. Quoth Dwight, whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would, I do not do that thing. So, number one, as you climb your way into that ivory tower, take your body seriously. Dance, run, walk, play hockey like Mr. Milbert, but do something. Don't think you can just steamroll your way through 12 hours of difficult mental work. Your brain will not appreciate that, and neither will your body. Both will thank you if you take them out for a spin now and again. Number two. Remember that everyone has their own cross to bear and their own struggles to face. Even that smug, entitled, privileged jamoke sitting next to you who checks all the boxes in the worst ways, he's got his struggles too, and we really don't know what he's going through. So give people a chance to reveal themselves. Number three, take care of your teeth. Floss every day, but do not, repeat, do not brush too hard. You'll thank me and so will your gums. Number four, please don't get too hung up on the wokeness of one's language. Yeah, words matter and can signal your politics. Your Aunt Millie may say, say some embarrassing and inappropriate things now and again. But what does she do in the world for other people, for the people around her, maybe for you even? Number five, don't waste so much time on TikTok. Number six, remember that you live in a big, diverse, ugly beautiful, backward, complicated, rich, violent, advanced, and progressive nation. But you get to pick what nation that is. And if you don't care for Andrew Jackson or Joe McCarthy, then introduce yourself to Ida B. Wells or Brian Stevenson, Eleanor Roosevelt, or maybe Barbara Jordan. Last I checked, they're American too. Number seven, there is no limit to the wisdom you can gain, nor the number of times you can watch 12 Angry Men. That's right, the original black and white 1957, the one where all the actors are now dead, sorry. Number eight, when someone tries to tell you how smart, funny, helpful, admirable, or creative you are, try to believe them. I'll close now with a quote from another Dunder Mifflin employee, Andy Bernard. Quote, I wish there was a way to know you're in the quote, good old days before you've actually left them. We love you, class of 2020, and all your smarts, energy, talent, ambition, and potential. Here's the keys to the world. Sorry for the condition we left it in.
Hey class of 2020, I love you guys. I miss you guys. I'm thinking about you all the time. Um, so I spent a lot of time this week trying to make a very intense video montage project for this last lecture. It didn't work. My laptop just couldn't handle the amount of data. So number one Mustang lesson, it's okay to give up sometimes. Um, but it also gave me all this time to think about what I did want to say to you. And I want to talk about poetry, which I think a lot of you don't know this. My undergrad degree was studying writing poetry and I was really far away from home and really homesick. And I know that none of you are homesick right now, but I think a lot of us might identify with feeling homesick for before this all started. Um, most of what I studied was poetry of protest and poetry of witness, so I like to really think deeply about how poems could change the world around us. But I also found this incredible kinship with Emily Dickinson, who I think frequently gets written off as like a nice lady who wrote nice poems. But if you look at Emily Dickinson, she was actually a lifelong student of the sensation of yearning and also of being this like small piece in a world that was aflame around her. Um, and I thought, who, who can't identify with that right now? So I wanna give you one of her poems. Um, it's a poem I found early on and in my college career, and I loved it because it's about the prairie. Um, my association with the prairie up to this point was getting stuck in a freshman colloquium maintaining the prairie and I would come home with like giant rashes on my arms from uh, allergies to the plants. But I found this poem in college and I thought, oh, how wonderful to be from a city in the Midwest with the prairie behind the school and how much do I miss it. So um, I think it's an easy poem to pass over, but it packs a punch. It's only five lines long. And um, I want to invite you to memorize it if you are so moved because it's been something that I can pull out of my back pocket to ground me for 12 years now. If you know Emily, you know she did not title her poems, so here it goes. To make a prairie, it takes a clover and one bee. One clover and a bee and reverie. The reverie alone will do if the bees are few. That's it. Um, miss you guys. Love you with my whole heart. Bye. Hey everyone, it's Mr. George. Just wanted to send a quick message. Um, first of all, I'll say congratulations on graduating. Uh, proud of you. Um, maybe offer a little advice, take a lot of things. Um, you know, some of you have known for four years, some of you I know pretty well, some of you have known for a year. Um, some of you I don't really know that well at all, um, but all of you, I'm, I'm proud of you. I think you've done a lot during your four years, uh, been through a lot, you've come through it. Um, you should be proud of yourselves. And for that, I want to say congratulations. Uh, as far as advice, I guess my advice going forward would be to remember that you are part of a community. Uh, you will be part of a community going forward also. So don't be afraid to rely on that community. Don't be afraid to be involved in your communities. Um, don't be hesitant to reach out or help people that in your community that might need it. Um, yeah, I think if you remember that, that'll serve you well going forward. Um, so, like I said, I wanted to be brief. I wanted to say congratulations. Wish you the best of luck. Um, you know, it's been a wonderful four years with all of you. And uh, thanks. Bye. To the Mustang class of 2020. I know this is not the way you expected your senior year to end. Nobody is going to disagree with you that this is just not fair. If there's a lesson to be learned, you have learned not to take anything for granted. Remember, these circumstances are not an indication of your worth. As a group, you have already shown that you are resilient. Many of you travel long distances to attend school at Northside. While this is only my second year at Northside, I feel so fortunate to have gotten to work with so many of you. You are diverse, you challenge norms, you push boundaries. Let me leave you with Mrs. Roberts' four rules for life. Be kind, treat other people the way you would like to be treated. Be a lifelong learner. There is always something new to learn, even if it's not computer science. Travel as much as you can 
experiences are so much more important than possessions. And lastly, never turn down a job interview or a lunch. You never know what will come of it. Lastly, I just wanna say how sad I am that I'm not going to be able to see you walking the halls next year, that I won't be able to come and see, say goodbye to you. I wish you all well, and I can't wait to see what this class is going to accomplish. Congratulations, Northside Class of 2020. I hope a disappointing and stressful end to your senior year doesn't keep you from celebrating all of your accomplishments. You have so much to be proud of. And as you move into the next chapter of your lives, I just wanna leave you with a few thoughts. Find something to be passionate about. Don't be afraid to fail. You either win or you learn. You don't have to have it all figured out right now. You're gonna get there. Work hard, but never forget to stop, look around and smell the roses. Experience as much as you can. Stop comparing yourselves to others. Instead, focus on becoming the best possible version of yourselves. And lastly, class of 2020, always remember, be great. Hello, most awesome graduates of the class of 2020. This is Mr. McCormick here with a lecture for you entitled, How to Hit a Curveball 101. If you don't quite know how to hit them. Do we swing high? Do we swing low? Do we swing early? Do we swing late? We just don't know always, but eventually we figure it out. Sometimes we've been throwing so many curveballs that we feel like this guy here. But we do have the power to figure out how to uh, tackle the curveball and how to hit the ball out of the park. I myself have been throwing a few curveballs, especially in college and in my education. As a senior in college, my Navy Reserve unit was called to active duty. I had served in uh, the United States Naval Reserve during, in, during my time as an undergraduate, and my unit was called to active duty for the Gulf War. I was under the impression at the time that reservists would just go sit in a base and take over for the active duty people who would actually go off and do the fighting in the war. But I was wrong. Within a few days of showing up to active duty, I was uh, sent on an amphibious ship to the Persian Gulf where my unit would train day in and day out for an amphibious landing on the beaches of Kuwait, much like uh, what the military did storming the beaches in Normandy. We were planning to do the same thing in Kuwait. Fortunately, though, uh, that did not happen. The Gulf War was over much faster than anyone had anticipated, and I was able to return back to my college campus just in time for the summer semester. However, I was 16 credits uh, short at that time, uh, a full semester behind the rest of my classmates and my friends. And the only thing on my mind upon returning was that I wanted to graduate on college, college on time and begin working. So I uh, changed my major from English education. At the time, I was studying to become a teacher, but I changed my mind from English education to English literature, and I changed my career path to journalism. And I did, uh, I did do that for a few years, writing sports and arts and entertainment journalism. But after a few years of doing that, I really wanted to be a teacher. So I took a job teaching high school in Korea, where I taught for two years. I loved that job, and I've been a teacher ever since. Lots of people have had curveballs thrown their way, and uh, it may have taken a while to figure it out, but they did. Mr. Uh, Walt Disney here was fired from his first job uh, as an animator in the 1920s by an editor who told him that he lacked imagination. At the time he had an animation company, but he was forced to dissolve that company uh, and he nearly went bankrupt and lived on dog food as a result. And now look at his legacy. Before J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series, she was living on the Scottish welfare system as a single mom and she went on to become one of the most successful commercial writers of all time. We all know uh, the story of Michael Jordan, who was cut from his high school basketball team, but he still uh, carried on. He was persistent, he was patient, and he went on to make a big name for himself in college basketball and professional basketball and marketing. And finally, Albert Einstein spent years after university trying to find a job as a teaching assistant because no one would hire him and look at his legacy now. 
<laughs> so my advice to you is this. Be patient. Be persistent. Continue doing your due diligence as you've done. If you do, things are bound to come your way. They may take a little longer than you had planned, but they will come your way. I can't wait to see all your names lit up on a billboard somewhere or read about you in a byline in a magazine or a newspaper. The world is yours. I know you will do great things. Congratulations on graduating and good luck in life. Hi seniors, I'm Mr. Tabora. And I'm Miss Mulligan. And we won't see you again for the rest of this academic year. So we are conducting our last lecture as a collaboration and we're calling it our last co-lecture. So first off, congratulations on four years of hard work. Uh, it's a time to celebrate for all the work you've put in, especially this last few months where it's been a struggle for most of us and art of us, but you saw it through, we saw it through, and so it's, this is a testament to your, to your resilience, your intelligence, and your hard work, and so kudos to you. We also want to remind you that good things come out of Northside, including you including our graduates. You are some of those amazing things that come out of Northside. We also like to include our marriage as coming out of Northside. We met at Northside probably around the time that you were born and got married several years ago, and we like to include that. If this is now the first time that you're finding out that we're married, sorry, but at least you know before you officially graduate. Um, if you remember, I had 110 of you exactly as ninth graders, and I abandoned you after the first semester when we moved to Singapore as a family. I got exactly five of you back for AP Physics, and it's such a bummer that I only got to spend, oh, two-thirds of a year together. And so hopefully it was a good two-thirds of the year. And so I just want to say thank you for all that, your hard work. And we also want to say... Travel the world. That's a, a big um, thing that you should be thinking about as you move into your future. Mr. Tabora followed me when I went to Singapore for a Fulbright Fellowship, and we're certain that there'll be many opportunities for you as you continue to explore everything that's available to you. COVID won't last forever and the world will open up. So don't just visit other places, exist in other cultures and find new experiences that, that charge you and inspire you. As you may know, I've lived in six different cities in three different countries, and it's always gratifying and exciting for me when I go back to those places and I find something new. I realize and, and see different things that I haven't noticed before, and it's, it's a pleasure to, to under, re-understand these things that I've, I haven't seen before. Chicago will always be here for you. I'm not originally from Chicago. I grew up in Ohio, in Ohio but Chicago is my chosen home and I'm sure it's home to you. You'll always be able to come back to Chicago with these new mindsets and, and new ways of seeing things. Chicago will always be here for you. Northside will always be for, here for you. Now it's your turn to fly. So with that, we end. So congratulations, you all, and hope you all have a great four years of college. Enjoy it, relish it. It's a time to grow. Hello, class of 2020. It is Miss Cooper, your friendly local social worker. Um, I don't know if a lot of you know this, but I am also kind of an honorary member of the class of 2020 because this is my fourth year at Northside. I feel extra connected to you guys because we got to know the ins and outs of the school together over these four years. And it has definitely been an eventful, beautiful, overwhelming, and sometimes tragic series of years for you all. Um, I know that you are a resilient and just powerful group of young people. I'm really excited to see what happens when you go out into the world. I can't wait because I know how you've changed Northside with your leadership and your values of community and connection and compassion. And so I can't wait to see what happens when you spread those out into your various futures all over the world. Um, usually for my seniors, I give them a packet of stuff with a, a printout of this speech that was written by Mary Schmidt for the Chicago Tribune way back in 1997, um, sort of around the time when I was graduating high school. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you because that would be long and crazy, but I am going to read you a few excerpts and you could go Google it if you like. It was also made into a song. 
Um, it's called wear sunscreen. Okay. Don't worry about the future or worry, but know that worrying is as effective as trying to solve an algebra equation by chewing bubble gum. The real troubles in your life are apt to be things that never cross your worried mind, the kind that blindside you at 4 p.m. on some idle Tuesday. Don't feel guilty if you don't know what to do with your life. The most interesting people I know didn't know what they wanted at 22 to do with their lives. Some of the most interesting 40 year olds I know still don't know. Maybe you'll marry, maybe you won't. Maybe you'll have children, maybe you won't. Maybe you'll divorce at 40, maybe you'll dance the funky chicken on your 75th wedding anniversary. Whatever you do, don't congratulate yourself too much or berate yourself either. Your choices are half chance, so are everyone else's. Sometimes you're ahead, sometimes you're behind. The race is long and in the end, it's only with yourself. So class of 2020, enjoy the long race. Please come back and visit us and congratulations. Congrats class of 2020. You're about to close the high school chapter of your lives and enter a whole new and also exciting chapter. Well-deserved celebrations are in order. I'm Ms. Lingador for those of you who don't know me. And for those of you who do, you know me better as Ms. Escobar. Most of you who I have taught, I did so when you were first starting out at Northside. I've had the privilege of watching you grow and have witnessed how amazing you are. Nearly 12 years later, I still remember my last lecture from my psychology professor when I graduated from Northwestern. I'll never forget her advice. Some of you have heard me pass it along. And for those of you who haven't, her advice was simply this, and it was to be a nice person. That is the best advice that I could ever give you. Words clearly have a huge impact on us since I still remember my professor's words actions have even more of an impact. I'm sitting next to this beautiful plant that Miss Woodruff gave me a long time ago. Her simple act of kindness brings a smile to my face every time I look at the plant. So the big message here is to try your best to practice kindness and be a nice person. Beyond this message, some of you are about to embark on the college experience. Never have I ever had more resources accessible to me than when I was in college. Take advantage. Some of your professors will be experts in their fields. Learn from them. Do research on whatever you're interested in. Study abroad and see new places. Join a club. Take a variety of classes. Something you never thought about might end up being your passion. The same thing goes even if your next path is in college. Try different things, take up hobbies, and discover new adventures. Whatever might come, do your part to make this world a better place. You are our future, and I trust that you will make it a better place. With happiness for you all, goodbye, and have fun out there. Hey there, class of 2020. Um, before I give my last lecture, I just want to say first just how much I miss each and every one of you, seeing you in the classroom, in the hallways. Truly, I miss you. I wish we were all in school and we were able to celebrate together. Um, and also, I just want to let all of you know how proud I am of you. Um, proud of all your accomplishments in high school, of what you do in the classroom, out of the classroom, your extracurriculars, how you support each other, and how you've grown as a community. I'm so looking forward to hearing about everything you accomplish in college and beyond. Um, for my last lecture, I personally am not going to share too much. I don't have much words of wisdom myself, but I'd rather just share um, the words of wisdom that were given to me in high school when I was in high school, kind of the motto that I try to live by. Um, and they're words from my personal hero, the person I look to up, um, look up to most in life. And that is my, my grandmother, my little grandma. You can see her right there. Um, she's in the white shirt, and she was a little, little woman. She was like 4'9", but she was a giant in her community. Um, and that's because she always put community first. Um, she, all of her actions, she always thought about community, and she was volunteering, helping others. Even until the moment she passed away, she's 92 years old, um, she was still volunteering into her 90s, um, helping other people at every opportunity she had. Um, the words she shared with me, um, and she shared with me, my everyone in my family, and I've heard these a million times, but I want to share with you is that it's not what you get, but what you give that measures the worth of the life you live. 
And I think about that all the time. I think about that and it's the, really the motto I try to live with by myself um, to make sure that in life I'm always putting the perspectives of what can I give to others? How can I support others? How can I help others? How can I build the community? That that's gonna be more important in my life than things that I get, than, my, than the money I get, than the possessions I have. So that's just how I think about, that's my approach for life. Um, that's been a helpful words of wisdom that have gotten me um, through life in both great times and hard times. Um, and I always put that in perspective. And I just think about giving to each other. I want to once more just thank the class of 2020 for giving me the opportunity to be your teacher the last four years. And by giving me that opportunity, it's truly been a priceless opportunity. So you make sure you're giving more. You'll all be worth millions. All right. Thank you. And good luck with Good luck, and I hope to see you soon. Hello, Northside Class of 2020. Uh, I just wanted to share with you all a little bit um, about why your class is so special to me. Uh, I had the great privilege of teaching a lot of you over the last four years, and many of you I taught more than once. Um, last year in particular, uh, I taught a lot of you in either pre-calculus or calculus, um, and you helped me get through what was without question, the hardest year of my life. Uh, my daughter, who was eight months at the time, was in and out of the hospital pretty much the whole school year. Uh, I came to school every day terrified, you know, as to what was going to happen with her. Um, and you guys in your class, uh, the students that I had in class or that I saw in the hallway who would smile and wave at me, uh, the students I had in X block or colloquium, um, to all of you, you did more to lift me up last year than you you know you could ever imagine um, you brought a smile to my face you made me laugh when I needed it uh, it would not have been the same um, it would not have been manageable for me if I didn't have you uh, I love you all um, I'm gonna miss you all terribly um, and I just, I guess, in parting, wanted, you know, to give you this takeaway that you never know what another person is going through in their life. Um, and sometimes you are that person that they need the most, even if it's just your presence, um, you know, your smile, or just being, you know, your wonderful self. Uh, you guys, as a group, are going to do wonderful things you already have in your four years at Northside um, and I will miss seeing all your beautiful faces in the hallway um, good luck to you all um, I will miss you um, and you know, go conquer the world bye <laughs> class of 2020 这是什么字？人，人，这是一个人的字。对，人什么意思？What does it mean? Person. Yeah, person. 好，你再写一遍好不好？再写一遍，再写一遍。So Sunny is gonna write this. 人汉字 again. All right. My point is, each and every one of you is a very special 人. Okay. And you stand tall on your own feet. <laughs> your feet. Okay? So you stand tall on the ground with your feet. Okay? Implying you got to work hard as you've done already in the past four years at Northside. So keep up the good work, seniors. You can do it. And you see, this Ren has two strokes, two writing motions. You're never alone, okay? Somebody is supporting you. Somebody's got your back, and you're also supporting other people. So collaboration is the key. And as a language teacher, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of learning language as well, okay? Because it's a bridge. You guys are all bridge makers, all right? Have a global perspective. Um, good luck in the future. 
Good luck. Best of luck. You can do it. 加油！再见。洋洋跟他们说再见。再见。再见。Say good luck. Good luck. 对，再见哦。好了，再见。Congratulations, class of 2020! Since I was not able to give my going to college speech in class for seniors, I'm going to do it now.、Um, you know, college is scary. You're leaving your friends and your family behind. You might have a messy roommate or not get along with him or her. Or if you're like me, your roommate may never go to class and stay up until 3 a.m. playing Unreal tournaments.、Um, but at least he went home every single weekend. So you know, you have good and the bad. You know, there's going to be times when you get lonely. You're going to miss your family and friends, and you might want to transfer schools and come home. My advice: give it a year, give it the old college try, give it that year because you may not talk to anybody in your classes, or might not get along with your roommate or people on that wing of your dorm. But eventually, you are going to find your people. It is very much like high school. You need to put yourself out there, be friendly, engage with people in your classes, introduce yourself to everybody in your dorm. And join organizations that you're interested in. College is a lot like Northside. There is a club for everything at school. It doesn't matter if you go away or stay home and go to school in the city. Getting involved in your university or your college is going to make your experience exponentially better. You know, after a year, then evaluate if that is the correct place for you. There is nothing wrong with transferring schools or going back home to regroup and evaluate what you want to do with your life. Things change. Life changes. Your dreams and aspirations may change, and the plan you laid out for high, that you laid out in high school need, might need to be adjusted. You know, I went to school thinking that I was gonna、um, graduate and then go straight to law school. By the time I was a senior, I realized I didn't want to go to law school and I wanted to go and teach. So, applied for grad programs and went and became a teacher. So, with that said, I'd like to thank each and every one. Of you in the class of 2020 for an amazing four years. Continue learning and continue pushing yourselves. Bonjour, class. I just wanted to say it has been such a pleasure knowing and、uh, teaching all of you over the past four years. Some of you I know very well. Some of you I only know through colloquium. But、uh, you're a wonderful class, and、um, I wish you all the best. I wanted to give some practical advice for college.、Um, first thing, wear flip flops in the shower. Foot fungus is very hard to get rid of. Second thing, don't bring a car to college. For so many reasons, just don't do it. Trust me. And the last thing, call your parents. They love you, and they just want to hear the sound of your voice. Oh, one more thing. Vote, please. All right. Good luck. Congratulations. Felicitations. Bravo, class. Hey, class of 2020. Congratulations. I have thoroughly enjoyed getting to know you over these past four years, and I hope you choose to keep in touch as you move forward in your lives. If part of that involves going to college, then a piece of advice I have for you is to try different things, join new clubs, try classes that are outside of your major. You. Might find a new passion that you did not know was there.、Um, I majored in marketing, and I clearly am not in the world of marketing. So you just really don't know where your path will lead you. College is the time to explore, even more than high school was. So enjoy your time and keep in touch. Bye. Hey, class of 2020. So I know that this senior year has literally surpassed all of our wildest and most disturbing dreams, and I'm so sorry that you're going to miss out on all the milestones that you expected and deserved. But for this last lecture, I'm going to pretend like everything is normal, because someday, it will be. First, college is probably the last time in your life when you, your most important job. Is just to learn. So I want to encourage you to take that opportunity and run towards it. Your campus is going to be full of brilliant people and unique opportunities just steps away. So yes, that means going to office hours to meet your professor, even if talking to adults makes you feel vaguely nauseous. And it may mean waking up before 10 a.m. on a Friday morning, even if you don't have a class, to go hear that Nobel laureate speak. And it definitely means 
sitting down at a lunch table with people you don't know rather than sticking with your roommate all the time. I know all of these things seem completely wacky at this particular moment, but that won't be true for long. As trite as it sounds, college is what you make of it. Make it something good. All right, so eventually you'll have to pick a major and a career and all that stuff. And I know that everybody's gonna tell you to do what you love and I'm not going to disagree. After all, I decided to be an English major because I thought reading novels was the best homework. It is. But I want to give you a little bit of a different way to think about things. What we do with our days necessarily changes how we see the world and the people in it. So rather than just thinking about what you love, think also about how you want to see. Yes, absolutely, choose something that plays to your strengths, but maybe also something that challenges your perspective. All right, now for the quick stuff. Study abroad, do your reading, learn to cook, take naps. Congratulations, class of 2020. We miss you. Best of luck. Well, seniors, uh, not the way I was planning to say goodbye to you all or to kind of give you my last minutes of advice, um, but we'll, we'll do the best that we can, right, which is kind of, I feel like, almost your unofficial class motto as a senior class, it's doing the best that you all can, um, and you honestly have done as well as any group could with these situations and the crazy things that have happened during your time at Northside. So in terms of my, you know, kind of last lecture, you know, I sat here thinking about, you know, what do you say to kids that are stuck at home and doing this? And, you know, just like you, <laughs> it's it, it's kind of a crazy thing, right? It's, not, it's something that you can't possibly plan for. And so, you know, I think I'll just say these couple brief things, you know, in terms of how I think about all of you and um, what I think is good to think about as you move off to the next stage in your lives. And the first thing is that I have the utmost respect for any senior class at Northside because you all put in unbelievable amounts of work in school. Even if you think you were at putting in unbelievable amounts of work, trust me, Northside students um, do things in class and do things over the course of their career in high school that are just remarkable. And it's the reason why I love teaching at Northside, um, having come from a suburban high school where this was not common and where, you know, the work ethic that I see from all of you regularly is just so amazing compared to what my high school was like. Um, even in normal times, I would have so much respect for what you just accomplished. The fact that you all are doing it with all of the things that have happened to you over the, your four years at Northside, I have no words for how impressive it is to see you all persevere, get through this. Um, and I know it's not easy. I know it's tough. I know you, a lot of you are hurting right now. You're absolutely supposed to be. It's, it's just a terrible turn of events for you all. But I think the flip side of that is that because you've gone through these tough experiences, you are going to be so ready, more ready than anybody for things that would have been challenging in normal college life um, to be really, really easy compared to what you all have gone through. You're going to be in great shape. The things that, you know, I thought were hard when I was going to college are going to seem so easy. And so right now it's not going to feel good, but let me tell you, you know, the next year, three years, five years, ten years of your life, going through this experience is going to be something that makes you all so much more prepared than most teenagers usually are. Second thing I'm going to say is the same thing I tell my Lang students and Brit students every year. You're going to love college. You've been fighting for this moment for four years. You've been ready. No matter where you're going, no matter what you think it's going to be, it's not. It's going to change and be more than what you expect. I loved it. I still talk to my Indiana friends now every week, and it was the best four years of my life. I'm so excited for you all to see what the future holds. So excited for you all to make this next step and have a chance to study what you want to study and make friends with who you want to make friends and be in those college environments. I know you all are going to kill it. You all were an incredible class when I was teaching you, most of you last year. It was my pleasure and it was an absolute thrill to work with all of you. I miss you. I wish I could high five you in person and get a chance to see you all celebrate a prom and graduation. But even though I can't, just wanted to let you all know from my heart, you all are great, you're a pleasure, you're gonna do amazing things, and I can't wait to see what you do. All right, take care of yourselves. Congratulations, class of 2020. There are many things you will experience in life. Happiness, friendship, 
heartbreak, and disappointment, and many other things that will make you laugh and cry. There will be some things that you cannot control, and people will be there to celebrate you or knock you down. Always get up and stand up for what you believe, even if you have to do it on your own. Because at the end of the day, it is you who should matter first. So define success to what truly completes you. One of the best things about being a teacher is that you get to form relationships with students and watch them grow into amazing young adults. I am constantly humbled by your creativity, your curiosity, and your kindness. Some of you I have had the great honor to know since you were freshmen. Others I have met more recently and have grown quite fond of you. I will miss you guys. Please know that wherever life may take you, whatever situation you might find yourself in, you are loved and you have family of people back at Northside who care about you deeply. The thing I've always said I wanted for my daughters is for them to be happy and to be good people. That is my wish for you as well. As you continue on beyond Northside, don't forget to be playful and silly. Play practical jokes. Some of my favorite memories from college are the practical jokes I played. I had one friend who never locked his dorm room. My roommate and I would go to visit him on a regular basis and if he wasn't in, we would turn everything upside down. This went on for months before he realized who was doing it. So find time to play, but also be careful. I did a lot of really crazy things in art school, and I said that I was doing it to have great stories to tell my children. But once I had kids, I realized I couldn't tell them those stories. My last piece of advice for you is to see the good in other people and the good in yourself. Remember, people are formed by their experiences, and not everyone has had the same experiences. And we all have the potential to grow. One thing I often hear from Northsiders when they come back to visit is that they are surprised by the lack of diversity at their college or the rural community where their college is located, or by how few students are coming from big cities or urban environments, and that they have difficulty connecting with those students. I was one of those suburban kids. I grew up in Southern Connecticut in a wealthy conservative suburb the environment I grew up in was insular, and while I was eager to leave that community, I was also formed and defined by it. And I turned out alright in the end. So don't immediately dismiss kids who might be coming from very different experiences and environments. Even those suburban kids who say they're from Chicago when they're really from Winnetka. I think the hardest thing about being a teacher is having to say goodbye to your seniors. Please stay in touch. You impact your teachers' lives more than you might realize, and we miss you when you leave. So please come back to visit and let us know about all your new adventures. We love you. Congratulations to the class of 2020. It has been my privilege and joy to have been your teacher during your four years here at Northside College Prep High School. It's been a joy to watch each and every one of you develop as student leaders and I'm excited for you as you move on to the next phase of your life. The sky's the limit, and I cannot wait to hear about all the wonderful work that each and every one of you will do and accomplish. We have been asked to share our last lecture, and for those of you who've been in my classes, know I always have a presentation slide ready. So here is your last presentation. Remember, EQ is greater than IQ. Remember to be emotionally intelligent in all your social interactions, be empathetic, and character counts. For those of you who are in my sociology class, you might remember our five points versus 10 points activity. Remember the lessons from that activity and do not fall into social traps. Avoid 8 a.m. classes if you can. You might also want to avoid 9 a.m. classes. Continue to be curious, lifelong learners, follow your passion, be kind, respect the past, live in the present, and plan for the future. And finally, always remember to wear sunscreen and take a rice cooker with you. We will miss you, class of 2020. Thank you for leaving such a wonderful legacy in Northside College Prep High School.
Your class has been inspiring. You have taught us what it means to be resilient and persistent. And thank you for always fostering a strong sense of community at Northside. You will always have a home here and you will always be a Mustang. Until we get to see all of you again, please take care, take care of your loved ones. And I wish each of you the absolute best. Thank you for inspiring me as your teacher and go on and change the world. Congratulations once again to the wonderful class of 2020. Hi there, um, class of 2020. I've uh, been putting off doing this. Uh, not sure I could make it through it, so I just kept putting it off and I've listened to everybody else's lectures, which are just absolutely fabulous. And I hope that the plus side of this is that you will have them forever to remember and reflect upon. Um, in the classrooms, you might forget what your teachers had told you, but now it's put on video and you will be able to keep it and you will be able to reflect upon it. We're gonna miss you so much. Uh, what a way to end. But if any class can do it, it's your class. And you have shown your empathy and compassion and resilience. Unlike any other class before. And I'm not gonna repeat what other teachers and, and staff have said, but one thing I would like to add to it is that wherever you're going next year, you already have a heads up, a leg up in that you come from a very diverse environment. You've been exposed to other cultures. You've been exposed to other people, other thoughts, and you already have some skills going forward and I hope you just keep building upon them, that you keep staying open and you keep trying new things and that you explore, you keep exploring. And the one thing that I would encourage you to do is travel. Take any opportunity you can that your school will offer you, junior year abroad, internships, whatever they will offer you that will take you other places. So much is learned when you leave your comfort zone and you leave your country and you, and, and you travel and you see how others live and other ways of being. And I hope that you can take that opportunity. I also hope that you know how loved you are, how much we will miss you. And I hope that you keep in touch. Good luck. Hello everyone. Minasan, konnichiwa. Park Sensei desu. Some of you may not know who I am. I am the Japanese teacher at Northside. Four years went by so fast. And you should be proud of what you achieved. A Japanese song says, Sayonara wa karashi kotoba janai. それぞれの夢へと僕らをつなぐえる飛び立つよ一人で次の空へ Goodbye is not a sad word. It is the air that connects us to our respective dreams and the fly towards our sky. 皆さん ご卒業おめでとうございます。皆さんとの4年間は長いようで短かったですね。頑張りましたね。これからも新しい世界に向かって大いに頑張ってください。そして楽しんでください。Congratulations on your graduation, class of 2020. Right. Hey, Northside seniors. Uh, congratulations. First of all, on all that you've accomplished. I know this is, isn't how you imagined your senior year to be, or certainly your graduation time to be. 
um, but I'm sure you will find a way to celebrate. Um, I'm going to play a song uh, that meant a lot to me when I was a senior. It's called Celebrated Summer. Uh, so here goes. Love and hate was in the air Like pollen from a flower Somewhere in April time They had another hour I guess I better think of a way Congratulations, and proud of you all. You're just north side babies. How'd you get so big so fast? Wishing all these times would last, cause we love you so. Northside babies Learning how to think and be Waiting for university You're ready to go Oh, gee, you wanna be At U of C No, the western of brown A school, some wondrous school Near your home Oh, far from Chi-Town, someday maybe All your dreams will manifest Heck, we know that you're the best A teacher could know Say, Mr. Professor, yeah I'm talking to you, sir They don't need a lot only what they got Plus some inspiration and an equal shot You're just north side babies Slaving at those AP tests Dreaming of that day of rest When high school is done On north side babies Smartest kids we've ever known Kindness is to all you've shown. Now you've nearly won. On at our little school, there's just one rule. You must give your all. Thus, this COVID patch has met its match. Your eyes on the ball. Someday, maybe. If you stick it long enough You will get to strut your stuff Finding cures for cancer or the climate That's the answer, it's your time Now, kids, let's go We love you